Hello, it's Makeda Valletta, also known as the Body Scientist. And in case you don't know me, I have a background in exercise and sports science and nutrition science. Um, and I also, before that, started out in biotechnology. And I have committed all, I'm sorry, I've committed my life to studying all the ways that um, we can take our body to its highest level, okay? I believe that prevention is better than the cure. So being proactive about um, being healthy and staying strong, okay? Um, and so today I want to talk about some safeguarding your food through this corona pandemic, right? Um, and sustainable agriculture and some food issues, okay? Just, just advice I want to give you. Um, as it pertains to food because a lot of times um, well not a lot of times all the times in a crisis like when there's a hurricane or an earthquake and people need relief and they need food the things that they ship to people the rations and the things that get shipped are highly processed foods and highly processed foods don't give you the nutrition that you need to be healthy and strong and um, they also are full of toxins, okay? And when you're in a depleted state where you're stressed out, you might be in unsanitary conditions, and then you're also eating food. Like, remember, your immune system starts with the foods that you eat, okay? Like, I hear people constantly talking about, um, you know, oh, they're polluting the air, they're polluting this. There's pollution all around us, okay? None of us, unless we're going to live in a bubble, None of us can avoid it completely. But there are a lot of things that we can do to decrease our toxic load, okay? There's a lot of things that we can de do to decrease our toxic load. And a lot of it starts with what we're putting into our own system, okay? Um, with this whole, like, coronavirus pandemic, um, they're calling it a war. And I saw somebody recently post something, and they were frustrated because they were like, why do they keep calling it a war? It's not a war. It's a public health uh, emergency, and um, I would say that I do think of it as a war. And it starts with, like, when you study the immune system, right? If you go on YouTube and watch a video that talks about the immune system and how it works, you'll see we have all these different cells, all these different killer cells and T cells and leukocytes, all of these different cells that play different roles in identifying and destructing pathogens and foreign objects, okay? And there are people who will have issues like certain parts of the immune system may not be as strong as it should be. They don't have enough of these cells or these cells are depleted. And why is that, okay? As a nutrition person, as a nutrition scientist, as a body scientist, I always ask myself why. Doctors and the medical professionals don't ask why. Okay, this is just what it is. They don't ask, well, how can you increase these cells? How can you increase your lymphocytes? How can you increase your leukocytes? And all of these things that help, you know, destruct pathogens when you're exposed to it. How do you create an environment in your body that is harsh, a harsh environment for these invading species? You have to actually invest into your military, your defense, okay? which it starts with your skin. I'm always talking about that. It starts with your skin all the way into your gut. So when people are just eating whatever, okay, just eating whatever, and most of the stuff is just like processed stuff in the commercial food industry, trust and believe there is no way that you're getting adequate nutrition, okay? There's no way. And so there's also an issue with the food supply, okay? And I did a video before talking about um, food shortages, you know, and preparing for it because food shortages are coming. Um, so, but the thing is, is that it's mostly going to affect commercial farms, okay? And it's already happening. If you look it up, you will see there are already farms all around the world, in America and in other countries, that are destroying meat, that are destroying milk, that are destroying uh, produce that are destroying flowers, right? And even though you could go to the supermarket and not see these foods in the supermarket, so you think, oh, there's no more, or it's sold out, but a lot of these um, food, commercial food industries 
are not even able to sell their food. The farmers have to destroy it, okay? And the farmers have to destroy it because they sell big quantities to um, the schools, the colleges, schools, sporting events, uh, hotels, um, and none of those people are open right now, right? So they don't have that demand. So now they're destroying all this stuff and it's somehow also affecting the food supply chain, right? But also, you don't want to get food from the food from the commercial food industry in the first place. This is something that I've been saying for years. Like when I always talk about how I drink raw milk, and a lot of people think milk is bad, raw milk is a superfood. If you're consuming milk from the commercial food industry, it's bad because then you're getting milk from cows who are sick. They're raised. Um, they're not eating. Cows are only supposed to eat grass. When they're raised by the commercial food industry, they feed them all kinds of stuff probably including other cow parts. The cows are only supposed to eat grass. Um, the cows don't get any sun. The cows don't get fresh air. They don't exercise and move around. So, and then they're injected with antibiotics and hormones and all this other stuff. So the meat and the milk from those cows are not the same as the meat and the milk from cows that came, that were, that were outside getting sunlight, eating grass, okay? Eating their natural grass diet and we're not injected with hormones, antibiotics. They actually have the meat and the milk from those cows is high in omega-3 fats, is high in very important saturated fats, is high in vitamins A and D and K, okay, and, and a host of other things. So they're not the same foods. And the same thing is true for the produce. If you just go to a regular supermarket and you buy, you know, produce that's going for the commercial food industry, most of that most of the stuff came from another country or across the country. It was picked when it wasn't right, okay? In order to get the most nutritional value out of your fruits and vegetables and out of any plant foods, it needs to be picked when it's ripe and it needs to be consumed immediately. If you're, if you're going to the supermarket and buying avocados in New York, in Chicago, in all the places that avocados don't grow, and those avocados got picked like a couple weeks ago, sometimes a couple months ago, okay, and when it wasn't ripe, um, supermarkets, they will keep these non-ripe produce in the back, right, cold. And then when they want to put it out, they treat it with ethylene gas. Ethylene gas is, a, is the gas that fruits and vegetables omit when they are ripening. So like bananas, bananas uh, are one of the ones that kind of omit some of the most ethylene gas. So when they ripen, they emit this gas. That's why if you put other things next to bananas that you want to ripen fast, they will, right? But all fruits and vegetables emit ethylene gas. So the supermarkets will keep this produce back there for who knows how long. And when they, when they want to put it out, they're treated with ethylene gas to ripen it a little bit. And every single day that that fruit or vegetable or that plant is not on that tree, the nutritional value decreases, decreases, decreases. And they pick it when it's not ripe, already nutritional value depleted. Then it has to be shipped here, which sometimes can take a couple weeks for it to get to wherever it's supposed to go. Then it sits in the supermarket for more, a couple more weeks, you know, before they put it out. So, and then they irritate it, which means they expose it to UV radiation to kill the bacteria on it. Okay, which you also don't want to do because we naturally, people hear me talk about probiotics a lot. When it's really important to maintain your microbiome, so you don't want to be super like terrified of germs because there's viruses and bacteria all around us, all around us at all times. So that's why it's important for our armies, okay, for our microbiome to not be welcoming to infectious organisms. And there's a lot that goes into that. Um, but darn it, what was I going to say? Um, I just lost my train of thought. But I was talking about the produce not being right. Um, Oh yes, okay, the irradiation. So naturally, when we live life, when we play in the dirt, when we eat fruits and vegetables, you naturally should get inoculated with good bacteria from the soil. But because of all the pesticides and herbicides that's used in the soil, our soil is virtually depleted of these important micronutrients. I mean, um, not micronutrients, sorry, microorganisms, microorganisms, bacteria, hydrogen peroxide producing bacteria. Hydrogen peroxide kills almost every infectious disease, okay? It definitely kills lipid-contained viruses like the herpes virus, the HIV virus, the um, uh, 
the HPV virus and the COVID virus, okay? Hydrogen peroxide kills it. So you have hydrogen peroxide producing bacteria and other bacteria that we would naturally get exposed to when we we're in the dirt. But now there's so much pesticides and herbicides that's used in the soil from the commercial food industry that the soil is depleted of that. Then there's something called monocropping, where in California is notorious for this, um, but it happens a lot of places. It happens in Costa Rica. I mean, it happens almost everywhere. Monocropping, where people are growing the same species of one plant for miles. So for miles, they're growing just oranges, okay? And that's it. And that soil is overworked. They don't turn the soil the way they're supposed to. There's supposed to be diversity in the soil because that creates a more fertile, more nutritious soil. So the, the fruits and vegetables are being grown in depleted soil, full of pesticides and herbicides, irradiated, which is zapped with UV rays to kill the bacteria, picked when it's not ripe, okay, um, shipped for weeks to get here from another country or from across the country. And when food is coming into the country, it's not inspected. Food is not inspected at all. People think that our food is inspected. Our food is not inspected. At any time, there could be an outbreak from something in the food, okay? I mean, that's happened before. But they're like, oh, there's E. coli in the spinach. We're having a recall. We don't find it out until somebody dies first. And then you're like, oh, two people died from eating the spinach. We're doing a recall. So this is the reason why in previous videos, I would always say that we can always be exposed to infectious disease at any moment. At any moment, we could be exposed to infectious disease from somebody talking to you, from... Um, from the air you breathe, from the water you drink, from the food that you eat, at any moment. And I've been saying this for years. People who follow me, you know, that, you know, when I, I've always been talking about the microbiome and understanding immunity, right? So um, because that can happen at any moment, you have to always be ready. You have to have your defenses up. You have to make sure that your soldiers, your troops are strong. You know, it's like with the military, what's the point of having the military if the military has no weapons, they're out of shape, they're never trained, they're just a bunch of lazy, sick, incompetent people. And then a war happens and they don't have no strength, no strategies, um, no endurance, no weapons. That's your body when you don't put the effort into, you know, giving your training your soldiers and giving them the nutrition and ammunition they need to do their job when you get exposed to some type of infectious organism because it can happen at any moment. Now our food supply is very vulnerable because a lot of it's coming from another country or outside the country and it's not inspected despite what people think. Okay, And so this is the issues with the commercial food industry. This is the reason why you need to get your food from farmers markets, local farmers markets. This is the reason why I've had an issue with the vegan community constantly pushing this propaganda of, oh, this, um, they treat the cows like this, and they treat the pigs like this, and they treat the chickens like this, and it's so messed up. It is messed up. But you know what else? It's also messed up how they treat the produce, okay? Plants are also living creatures, okay? Any plants are living organisms that have feelings and that they communicate. I'm not going to get super in-depth with that because the scientific facts and anyone with common sense and a little bit of a brain can look that up and just know. Plants communicate. They, see, they secrete chemicals to kill because they don't want to be eaten. Plants have feelings. Plants are living organisms. Oh, hold on. This is video. Okay. Yeah, plants are living organisms. And so if you look at how indigenous people, when they deal with herbs even, you know, this is my other issue with Sabi when I was talking about him in a previous video and other videos, is that traditional herbalists, they, there is a certain way that they cultivate the herbs, okay? There's a certain time you have to know when to pick the herbs. A lot of times they sing to the herbs. They have ceremonies with, with, with the use of herbs, okay? Um, it's not just, oh, let me grind this up into a powder and put these in pills for everybody one size fits all and charge $1,500 when you could actually grow those herbs. Sometimes you can find those herbs and you don't have to spend $1,500 and you're actually using it the way it's supposed to be used, which is not just taking a whole bunch of pills. Okay. So if you understand anything about that, indigenous people, there are songs for the plants because the plants are living and to really activate the medicine, 
Ceremony was a part of it. Same thing was true with eating meat and hunting, okay? Hunting was also a ceremony for Africans, for Native Americans. There were hunting dances and, and songs, okay? So I'm just, so it just kind of annoyed me, like, when the vegan community would act like, oh, I don't eat animal foods for spiritual reasons. It's like all the indigenous people on the planet consume meat for spiritual reasons, okay? And all of it is spiritual. And plants are living too. So if, you, if you're killing a plant, to, if you're eating plants, you kill that plant too. You think that the coconut don't feel it when you hack it with a machete to open it? And half the, the plants that we eat have to be um, cooked. Like you can't eat raw potatoes. You can't eat raw rice. How are you eating raw beans? You can't eat, uh, what else? Like who's eating raw zucchini? I mean, like a lot of grains and vegetables have to be cooked. So going along with that, um, because there's so many things, my brain's always in so many places. Right now during this COVID issue, this is not the time to be eating a whole bunch of raw um, uh, fruits and vegetables, okay? It's more nutritious to cook your fruits and vegetables anyway, okay, with a fat. If you're gonna eat raw fruits and vegetables, they should be fermented, okay? Eating raw vegetables, eating raw broccoli is not good for you. Eating raw kale and raw spinach is not good for you. Okay, spinach is much healthier when it's sauteed in some really good quality butter. Okay, we can't really digest that and extract the nutrients from it without the fat. The, the, the heat and the fat help you to extract nutrients in digesting. Or if it's lacto fermented, the bacteria help you help to break it down so you can digest it. We don't have the cellulase enzyme. Cellulase enzyme. The cellulase enzyme breaks down cellulose. The nutrients in, that are in plants are tightly bound in the cellulose. We don't have the enzyme to break that down. That's why we cook, and that's why we ferment. And all around the world, you see people doing that with their vegetables, okay? Then um, you combine the fat with it to extract some of the fat-soluble nutrients from it, okay? So, um, and it's, it's really time to go back to traditional ways. I really believe in traditional foods, traditional ways, really real traditional ways that have proven to work. And um, if you're cooking your vegetables, if you have some type of, there's some kind of contamination, you're not gonna get sick. Just remember that the stuff is not, um, this food is not inspected, okay? So bioterrorism, and it doesn't even have to be bioterrorism. It just could be something that gets into the food like it's everybody always wants to have a conspiracy but the thing is is that bacteria mutate bacteria and viruses bacteria and viruses constantly mutate this that just happens in nature and the covid virus actually mutates very very um it can mutate easier because it's an rna virus all right i'm gonna do a video tomorrow about why this virus is so effective and so dangerous because i like to study the science of the virus. So a virus or a bacteria, like I will go look at the actual structure of it and study the structure of it and its mechanisms of action. The mechanism of action. That is, so even when you're dealing with something that kills a virus or bacteria, you should be able to explain the mechanism of action. So how does it do that? Does it activate the lymphocytes? Does it activate some phagocytes? Does it activate the body's ability to identify? Does it, you know, so there's a, me there's a mechanism of action. Um, and so going back to it, um, the farmer's markets, there are farmer's markets in like every city, right? And I haven't been to farmer's markets in every city, but I've been, New York City has excellent farmer's markets. I'm in Chicago now, but I haven't been to the farmer's markets in Chicago, even though I get stuff from this Amish family foods which is in um, Ukrainian village in Chicago. And they get stuff from family farms. Um, so, but, you know, California, I used to go to the farmer's market in Atlanta. Um, I've been to some in Fort Lauderdale. Um, there are farmer's markets all around the country. And some cities, I don't know if they have good animal products, but a good, a good farmer's market will have both plant and animal products. But you want food from your local environment. When I talk about raw milk, you know, I've never, I've been drinking raw milk for over a decade, and I've recommended it to tons of my clients. I've never known anybody to get sick from it at all. Nothing but good benefits, and I have videos about it that I will post below this YouTube video, and you can check out. 
Um, but it's like you know where your food is coming from. You know, it's coming. These farmers are coming and bringing the food, and you know where it's coming from. Small family farms. When you're dealing with the commercial food industry, you're dealing with a whole bunch of all these farmers. They're forced to use chemicals in their food. They're given subsidies by the government to use GMO seeds. They're given subsidies by the government to put all kinds of chemicals on their food. And these are the, the farmers right now who are destroying things because they don't have these orders to fill. So there's going to be shortages in the supermarket, okay? And a lot of the shortages are going to be food that's bullshit anyway. Um, and for a long time, like, when people go to Whole Foods and they say, oh, Whole Foods is so expensive. Why is it so expensive? You see people complain. They don't understand the food system, okay? The reason why the stuff in Whole Foods seems so expensive or is so expensive compared to the stuff in the regular supermarket or if you go food shopping in Walmart, the reason why is because the government gives subsidies to the farmers, okay? To, and so they are able to sell their food way cheaper. And the people who are doing it the right way, who are growing things organic, and they're not putting a whole bunch of chemicals, and at, the workers aren't working in unsanitary, stressful conditions, which also stresses out the plant or the animal, okay? The people who do it that way, they have to spend more money. Because first of all, real food goes bad. Just remember that, real food goes bad. The commercial food industry puts so many chemicals in the food to make you think that this food is fresh. Artificial colors, artificial gases, artificial scents to make you think, and this is not, it's a rotten food that animals won't eat. A lot of animals won't eat it. So, and that, that extends the shelf life, okay? But when you're consuming real food, I remember the first time I got an apple from a farmer's market in New York. When I, when I graduated college, I was in graduate school at Columbia, and my graduate program was really like all about teaching about sustainable agriculture and why that was so important. Because I would say, like, for example, you know, on the island of Manhattan, Manhattan's an island. We don't, nothing that we eat on this island is produced on this island. So what happens if there's an emergency and the bridges get closed? Where are we getting food from? You know, you want to be self-sustainable. Um, and that goes on to it even more. Like, okay, well, maybe you're in Manhattan. Maybe we're getting food from other parts of New York State and New Jersey and Connecticut as opposed to getting food from California. Like back then you would go to the supermarket in New York and the apples were coming from Washington state. Why are the apples coming from Washington state when New York is the big apple? We grow tons of delicious apples in our very own state. So why does it make sense to be shipping apples from Washington? First of all, that also causes a lot of pollution. People talking about this COVID situation and it's not so much pollution. Yes, part of it is because people aren't in their cars as much. Even though in Chicago, I see hella people outside. But in general, you could say there's not as much traffic. People aren't going to, to work as much. Okay, less pollution. But also, the food industry creates a lot of pollution. Shipping things, shipping water from Fiji. Why are we drinking water from Fiji? Why are we drinking water from Fiji? Does that make any sense? Do you know that the people in Fiji need their water? Do you think it's right for a big company to come in and seize their water and say, we're seizing this water and we're selling it and shipping it all so that every supermarket and drugstore in America can be stocked up with Fiji water? Does anybody even think about that? And then how much pollution that puts in the air for all these planes to be flying all this stuff? And then you have all these trucks driving you know, food from the West Coast to the East Coast, stupid, okay? It's not sustainable. And that kind of food is not good quality food. It's not highly nutritious food. You want local foods, seasonal foods from your local environment, from local farmers. It's time to support local farmers. And, you know, the, the, they, the commercial, it is also, it's important to understand that the commercial food industry uses chemicals on all the food, not just the animals, also the plants. And so that's why when the vegan community would use it, oh, you shouldn't eat pork, you shouldn't eat beef and chicken because of what they do, you shouldn't eat meat, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, first of all, you can get chicken, beef, and pork from a commercial, I mean, from a farmer's market that is actually very good, okay? And it's not all toxic because it doesn't come, it's not filled up with all these chemicals and they ate their natural diet. So you can find that. But even separate from that, there are other animals to eat besides chickens, pigs, and cows. People eat raccoons. I'm not eating them, but I'm saying people eat raccoons, they eat possums, they eat deer. I've had deer before. 
gator. I've had gator before. Uh, rabbit, you know, I saw a rabbit in Cuba. They eat rabbit in Cuba. And I have little bunny rabbits hopping around my neighborhood in Chicago. And it's funny because they sell rabbit meat around here. Like people eat, you know, so there's other animals to eat besides goats, lambs, you know. None of those are touched by the commercial food industry. It's only chickens, pigs, and cows. And the, the, the chicken demand came because of McDonald's. McDonald's chicken McNuggets is what increased the demand for chicken breast. And so, and they're only using the breast. They're not using the rest of the meat. So now they have to mass produce all these goddamn chickens so they can get enough chicken breast meat to make fucking chicken nuggets and chicken sandwiches for stupid ass people that want to go spend $2 on Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Okay? That feeds the commercial food industry. And so when people out here thinking, like, it's like the choices that you make, the foods that you choose to buy affects the globe in that way. And there's a lot of parts of the world where people been burning food, namely India and Haiti, where you would think, oh, people, people are hungry. So you think they don't have enough food. No, they have enough food. They have to burn the food because of you know laws that the US has on them the US is shipping the US is shipping in our super cheap processed crap and the people in those countries just like in America you have a lot of people who are poor anyway and they can't afford to buy the stuff from the farmers because it's too expensive the farmers can't afford to sell things as cheap as the commercial food industry is selling it they can't afford to do it so a lot of farmers in India, but they have to burn their food because they have no one to sell it to. So the, this commercial food industry thing is a global thing. It's not just the United States. And this is one thing I would get annoyed about. People always talking about, oh, the U.S., food in the U.S., food in the U.S. Yo, I've traveled a lot of places, and there's a lot of places I haven't been, but I know people who've been there. And de There's processed food everywhere. Okay, there's very few places in the world that doesn't have the same crap that you see in the United States. And some places that I've been, I've seen even more of it than I see in the United States. Okay, um, like a lot of Caribbean countries. When I was in Jamaica, when I was in Haiti, like people, Costa Rica, um, people, and even Colombia. Like, and I have videos where I talk about that. Like, people can, you know, like to talk like they eat better foods, but they don't. Like, they be drinking more soda have a whole bunch of processed shit. Like, I could find, you know, raw coconut water and some kombucha and, you know, antibiotic-free meat easier walking down the street in Manhattan than I could in some of those Caribbean islands and places that I've been. So the commercial food industry is a global issue. And it's very complicated. And um, so there's always been an issue with the commercial food industry. Even there's been a lot of stories about meat packing plants and... Um, migrant workers. I did a video I think last year called The Untold Story The Untold Stories of a Chicken Sandwich and it was talking in depth about this commercial food industry issue. Um, but it was also going into some racial racial issues as well um, which is multi-layered and labor issues. Um, but I remember being in high school and seeing strawberry pickers who were also migrants I remember seeing strawberry pickers protesting in front of supermarkets in New York City in the 90s, okay, because they were getting cancer. They were getting lung cancer and stuff from spraying these pesticides and stuff on the strawberries and then breathing it. So what do you think it does to us when we eat that, you know? And so it's like, I like when people keep this, this that same energy and they have a well-rounded conversation. So to the vegan world, that all this time, they want to talk about, oh, the milk is bad and the meat is bad, because you're talking about food from the commercial food industry, not, you know, the healthy, not, not in this healthy natural source, which you can find. A lot of the vegan community act like you can't find that. You can find that, okay? And so then they're like, oh, I, we can't find that, so I'm just going to starve myself and eat fucking lettuce and carrots and carrots and corn and shit all the time. No. You know what? The water is super polluted. You, there's hardly any good water on the planet, but does that mean that you're not going to drink water at all? You're going to go on a water strike and not drink any water because if you drink water out the plastic bottle, the plastic chemicals leach into the water. You drink water out the faucet, it has fluoride and chlorine and all this other stuff in it. So, but you still need water, right? So you're just not going to drink water? You have to find the best sources that you can. So the vegan community just pushing this, this, this propaganda, this half-truth of, 
oh, these foods are bad. When these foods are only bad when they're coming from the commercial food industry. They're not bad when they're coming from a farm. That's why when you see a lot of people who grew up on farms, they're built. People that be growing up on farms are usually healthy, they're tall, they're strong. Okay, and I'm not talking about a commercial food industry farm. I mean a real farm. Um, but they would say these things about, you know, the, 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 the pigs, the chickens, and the cows, but they don't talk about what happens with the produce? It's just as bad. It's genetically modified. I have a video about that, the dangers of GMO foods, where I'm talking for like 50 minutes going in depth about that. That's something I know about in depth. So you have the GMO issue, which was a big problem and rampant in our food supply before people even knew, before anybody even knew. Okay, I knew, but a lot of the public was so late, and then they want to protest Monsanto. Too late. This shit's all in the food, and we don't even really know what it does, okay? Um, then you have monocropping. You have species of plants going extinct because of monocropping. And biodiversity is important. All the flora and fauna and organism on this planet is here for a reason. And so when you start depleting species because you're doing monocropping, which the commercial food industry definitely does, then they are growing, they depleted the soil of its microorganisms and nutrients. They are picking stuff when it's not ripe. They're spraying it up with gazillions of freaking pesticides and herbicides, okay? Um, they're shipping it halfway across the world. And then that's not a nutritious food. There's hardly any vitamin C in that orange that you're eating, okay? And this is the reason why animal foods become even more important because they're more nutrient-dense. But overall, you just want to get your stuff from the local farmer's market, okay? So I suggest that people start to do that because number one it will make you healthier you don't want cans of freaking progresso soup and goya beans okay you don't want that that stuff is full of msg it's full of all kinds of, i could go on it's a whole nother hour conversation for me to tell you all the things that's wrong with that cereal is not a healthy breakfast none of that crap they be sending you condensed milk you don't want those rationed crappy foods you want to do your best and, and when food starts running out in the supermarkets do your research you will see because it's coming from the commercial food industry, which to me is kind of a good thing because that shit needs to end anyway. How great it would be if people had to now de depend on local farms and farmers markets um, because we do have enough food. Okay, we have, enough, we've been, we, we have been producing food in excess, in excess, and out of balance with the planet. Okay, and our ancestors had to eat what was around them and what was in season. People have gotten spoiled and they're stressing the system trying to get all these damn coconuts from Thailand and shit. You know how you know how much pollution that puts in the air to transport coconuts and coconut water from Thailand? You know, like people don't even think about that. It's one thing if you got getting coconut water from Jamaica is a lot because it also depletes the the the, the stuff in that country. You know, it depletes it. How are you gonna have coconut water in every supermarket in America that came from Jamaica, then it's like, yeah, that's a lot of cutting down coconuts to fill the big ass of, you know, United States with Jamaican coconut water 100 days out, 365 days out the year. You know, like, they're stressing on the system. When acai berries became super popular, everybody's like, acai so healthy, so healthy. Then all of a sudden, everything was acai flavored. And you know what? There were articles about how it was, they were depleting the acai in Brazil. So everything must be in balance, people. People have to start looking at how things are interconnected, and it's time to get strong. Because listen, the weak, this is not time to be weak. It's never time to be weak. But the people who are passing, you know, from COVID, they already have underlying issues in their body, whether they know it or not. A lot of people are malnourished. They've been eating the wrong shit. And there's probably a lot of people who are even listening to this, this video. So it's like, you get exposed to something, whether it be this virus or another, some other thing, because it will be something else. That's how nature works. And you're only as strong as your weakest link. So that's why taking care of yourself, being conscious of what you're putting in your system, understanding that you have a microbiome, understanding that everything, every single thing you put on your skin, every single, every single thing you put in your mouth affects them. Okay? And no, you can't live, you can't be 100% in a bubble away from all toxins. Like, I put, like, you know, the makeup that I use, right? I use a little bit of MAC powder and some eyeshadow. That makeup has chemicals in it, okay? Um, 
But that's why like I'll use clay mask every once so often to pull out the impurities. But my diet, the air in the place that I live in, um, the things that I put on my skin, like all of that stuff, I mean I maintain my microbiome. So when you have way more positive, that little ten percent of toxins is not gonna do much for you. But when you are exposing yourself to so many toxins because you're using regular ass soap, regular ass lotion, using hand sanitizer all the time, washing with antibacterial soap, taking antibiotics every time the doctor tells you to, eating regular ass food from wherever, then your toxic load is much greater. And you know, you don't want you don't want to be that. You want the good to weigh outweigh the bad. Okay? And so that's the important thing. Um, but yeah, my advice to people is to start stocking up on like organic meats, you know, get bones for broth. Um, freezing it, you know, freezing it, and, um, you know, making sure, like, also probably maybe, maybe even learning how to can fruits and vegetables and ferment them, start finding a local farmer's markets, get into that habit, make it a habit to get good quality food, but learn how to cook, because there's going to be food shortages, and you're going to be trying to call and order food from restaurants, and they're not going to have it, so it's going to be time for people to cook, and Go to the farmer's markets. I This is just my advice is to stock up on good quality foods. Not, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of Cheetos and I'm going to buy like all this other bullshit, you know, frozen pizzas and whatever else people eat. You need good quality food from the local farmer's market. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking now, um, but definitely check out my other videos where I get more in-depth about the foods and about the nutrients you want so you have a broader understanding of why I'm even saying this. Um, I have so many YouTube videos with different nutrition topics, so make sure you listen. Um, follow me on my IG page at the underscore body underscore scientist. If you like this video, please like it, please subscribe, please share it. Um, take care of yourselves, and have a good day, people. Bye.